Good evening, it's 8 p.m. on Wednesday the 20th of March and this is the 42nd of 53 consecutive five-mile walks from the Gresswood Disaster Memorial to the Miners' Rescue and back again. Mervyn Roberts, who I had the pleasure of meeting with his wife, Sue, last week, is this evening's film. Less streets from me stretching into the distance, no magnolia bushes for cryptic and no puddles for rap. Just Mervyn and his story. This film is a tribute to Emir Roberts, a forgotten miner, Mervyn's father, who died in a pit accident at Gresford in 1967, when Mervyn was just six years old. This is a deeply poignant account of the impact that the death of Mervyn's father had on his family, particularly his young mother, Tide, and of course himself. The story you're about to hear also includes Mervyn's stunning description of a profound event when he was working his first job, age 19, at Brumbo Steelworks, when a mystery figure unknown to Mervyn was staring intently at him, making him increasingly nervous. To this day, Mervyn can vividly remember the sound of the mysterious man's clogs on the canteen floor as he approached the concerned Mervyn for the first time. A lot of people went through similar situations, I'm sure, you know, uh, losing a parent through whatever reason. But certainly speaking from my own personal view, um, I was sort of uh, brought up by the older generation of our family because obviously losing a, losing a father to a mining accident. Um, my mum, being a young woman, a young widow, uh, there was no support in those days. And I can, I can remember the, the, um, the trauma that, even as a young boy, I can remember witnessing the trauma that it caused her. Mm. And so our aunts, there were two spinster aunts, and my grandfather, my mum's dad, um, spent an awful lot of time with me, you know, mm. trying to make that, fill that gap, if mm. you like. Mm. Uh, I think now, I think back now, I remember my time after losing my dad and you, you can't imagine the trauma yeah. that mm. must have gone through that old man's mind mm. and, and all the old minders that we've come across in the past and I'm going to come here I as was, well. I thought, yeah. Did he never talk about it? No, no. He was so quiet. Why? Just because just he was quiet maybe, in nature or just because it was too difficult? Maybe he didn't, maybe he couldn't, yeah. maybe it was too upsetting, yeah. you know? Because it was a time we came from where you didn't, you, your parents just didn't have money to yeah. go and buy. So a lot of the time, you know. Yeah, like sound like my father-in-law says, um, yeah, all we had was mud and sticks, lad. You know, I can remember my mum, um, having to <coughs> repair trousers. <laughs> she just... Yeah, but you were a big lad and you were going Well, she just didn't have the funding, you know. Um, uh, it, difficult times, but um, good memories too. My dad's name was Emil, Emil Roberts. Uh, and uh, I received, uh, I received all his documents from his mining Career, although he was only young when he was when he uh, when he died. Um, but when I look at the the records and the comments by the managers and people who trained him, uh, it was quite some CV, I'll tell you. And um, and this map to my side here, uh, my dad was working in the area called the East Main and he was working on what they call the 95s and uh, and this is the area sort of this area here where they were cutting coal is where uh, one of the props gave uh, but what actually happened was that a prop um, supports had been allowed to overhang into the waste which they actually admitted that it was their fault uh, the actually support was actually hanging back over the prop 
And when the weights fell, it took the support with it. It took the, the, the bar, as they call it, with it, which the chalk flew out, which is a wedge-shaped piece of material, flew out and struck my dad. And he was buried, basically. And so we were doing our work, our daily work. And uh, we would stop after a couple of hours and, yeah. and have a cup of tea and a sandwich. And being a young male, I suppose, in those days, it was quite, quite a macho time, if you like. But when we were sitting in the break area, I was aware of a man that was in one of the other crews looking at me on a regular basis. And he was getting to the point where I felt almost as if I was being, um, um, what's the word, uh, followed. Anyway, this went on through the day and the night. And then I turned to the senior putman uh, and I said to him about this man, I said, uh, what's, what's wrong with this guy? What's, what's wrong with him? No, he said, you're imagining it, lad. He said, he's all right, he's okay. Now this man's name was Austin. I don't actually remember his surname and we became good friends until I was made redundant. Um, and so we, through the day, we went back into the brick area and had a cup of tea and we were coming to the end of our shift. And I can remember him like as if it was yesterday. Coming across and the sand of the clogs on the tile floor, coming across this brick area room and leaning on the end of the table and looking at me as I turned, because I used to smoke in those days, as I turned, he's looking me straight in the eyes And he said, have you ever worked anywhere before, lad? I said, no, I said, it's my first job. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> and he said, I don't know. He said, um, you've never worked in Gresford? I said, no, lad. I said, no, I said, I haven't. No, I said, my dad worked in Gresford. And his words were, bloody hell. And then he said my dad's name. Um, anyway, as it turned out, this gentleman was one of the four guys who'd worked alongside my dad and had carried him to the pit bottom and brought him up when he did his fatal accident. And he told me certain things about the accident that looking back, you know, I may have been able to take it now, which I've been asking questions, you know. Um, but at 19 years of age, it just, it just floored me. You know, some of the detail that he was giving me is not, you know, I was, I was quite surprised. Although, in a strange way as well, I was quite pleased that I'd found out some of the answers to the questions that I obviously thought but not asked because obviously to ask family members it would be too upsetting and it was never spoken about and you look back and you think wow you know if if the man was still alive today whether he would be able to speak about it I don't know uh, but at that time yeah it was a brutal environment but when i look back at my grandfather uh, obviously i was only 12 when he passed and i used to go up there uh, for weekends put on a, on a coach and i'd go up and someone would meet me the other end and i'd spend the weekend with my cousins and with him and my time was very very quiet and i as a as an adult now, I look back and you think, you know what that man had endured. He lost one boy to TB at 14, and then he went 
he suffered himself and had to leave the coal industry through an explosion at Bass Power that almost claimed his life and then he lost his second son in a tragic accident and you think wow you know how much can these people take how much punishment can these people handle you know um, and you think wow it's uh, it's just how they they lived i'm so thankful to mervyn for speaking so honestly thankfully we live in a world today more open to such expressions of emotion especially as men it's nowhere near perfect but it's better i hope the chance to speak of and remember his father emir has helped a little i'll never forget mervyn's ability to tell a story his account of the trauma inflicted upon him and his family Sue's discreet comforting touch when the emotion was clearly hurting Mervyn and the pride in his eyes when he spoke of reading his father's work record. No one might have talked about it much at the time, but we are now. Emir Roberts, father of Mervyn, who died aged 35 in a pit disaster at Gresford in 1967, you are not forgotten. This walk is also dedicated to you. This walk was dedicated to Ernest Roberts, Frank Roberts, George Roberts, Idris Roberts, John D. Roberts, and Emir Roberts. Tonight's song is Fix You by Coldplay. <laughs>